The headlines are nothing short of alarming. After SARS and the avian bird flu, it's the latest epidemic to hit the media and frighten the public. But what is this so-called superbug, and just how dangerous is it? MRSA, or Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus, is a form of staph bacteria that has become resistant to all our frontline antibiotics. It's estimated to infect more than 94,000 Americans a year, and, according to the U.S. government, nearly 19,000 people die with invasive MRSA infections each year. That's more than the number of people who die with AIDS each year. What's specific about MRSA is that they have acquired drug resistance to the common antimicrobials, and they are getting harder to treat. We definitely are in an epidemic of MRSA. Staph bacteria started becoming resistant to penicillin in the 1940s, only one year after the antibiotic was invented. Doctors fought back with a powerful new drug, methicillin, in the 1960s, but the bacteria soon mutated to develop resistance to that drug as well. Since then, the crafty germ has been in a race with modern medicine, developing resistance to more and more of our frontline antibiotics. It isn't like we're necessarily running out of antibiotics for those strains. On the other hand, it should also be pointed out that over the years that these community strains have appeared, they're getting more and more resistant to some of these other antibiotics. It's a natural Darwinian event that you, you know, is going to happen as long as we use antibiotics. What's more, MRSA is no longer confined to hospitals, nursing homes, and healthcare settings, where it was first detected in the 1960s. Over the past decade, infections with a new genetic fingerprint have begun cropping up in the general community. It's a strain that seems to be very difficult to stop or has a tremendous propensity to spread and cause infection. Hardly anybody is, uh, is totally immune from having such an infection. The bug has doctors worried. Pediatrician Lisa Asta says she has to examine, drain, and clean even small infected bumps on her patients extremely carefully now, in case they might be MRSA. It almost reminds her, she says, of medical care in the 1800s, before the invention of penicillin. The MRSA seems to have set me back in my medical practice to, you know, pre-1918. Having a cut or an abrasion in the early part of the 1900s was a real serious thing, and those were washed carefully, you know, antiseptics and... I mean, antiseptics were all we had before we had antibiotics, and the ability to treat things that were infected um, with antibiotics, you know, really reversed a lot of the morbidity and the mortality that we saw. I think that people have gotten away from basic first aid principles of washing things real well. Luckily, most cases of MRSA are easily cured if they are detected and treated quickly. If treatment isn't sought in time, however, the bacteria can invade the body and attack its internal organs, causing grave illness and even death. Many patients have said their MRSA infections looked at first like a spider bite or pimple, a rash or small bump. So it's important, especially these days, to keep a close eye on small cuts and wounds, to keep them clean, and to see a doctor immediately if you suspect you may be infected. Whenever there's an infection of the skin that, where there's lumps, bumps, or pus, then you should suspect staph. And whenever you suspect staph, these days you suspect, suspect MRSA. Some of those may self-heal if they drain on their own. Uh, but if there's, a, if there's a boil, and certainly if the child or the, whoever it is has any systemic symptoms like fever or anything like that, then they should seek medical care. Infectious disease experts are also troubled by a recent twist in MRSA infections. After an outbreak of severe MRSA pneumonia killed a number of previously healthy children and adults, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued a national warning in January 2008 for doctors to be on the lookout for children with both flu and staph. So far, life-threatening MRSA pneumonia is extremely rare, but invasive MRSA skin infections are on the rise. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend these steps to protect yourself and your children from MRSA infections. So it's important to take precautions, experts stress, but it's also good to keep the epidemic in perspective. In terms of the message to take from all the information that's coming out now, I think it's important to recognize that there's a problem, but to step back from some of the accumulating hysteria. Uh, the, the, the cases where these progress rapidly to life-threatening infection over a short period of time are really quite rare. The ultimate control of the community-acquired MRSA is going to require a vaccine. 
and the vaccines that have been studied to date have failed. I think that that ultimately that could be the only solution.